much reaction to Roseanne. Much like its original run, the reboot not shying away from social issues. And one of the characters on the show is a little boy who likes to dress in girls' clothing, sparking an important conversation for families. Do you feel like you're a boy or a girl? A boy. Roseanne is back and bolder than ever. So what's up with the girls' clothes? This just feels like me. I like colors that pop. It's more creative. How important is this to you? It's important. Well, you know it's going to be rough on you at school, right? But we'll back you up. <sighs> the groundbreaking sitcom reboot landing in over 18 million American households, igniting an important conversation about how to talk to your kids and grandkids about gender identity. Kudos to Darlene for letting Mark be himself. I mean, given the choice, who knows how many children would choose a style different from what society has assigned to them. Sarah Gilbert, who is back playing Darlene and is also a producer on the show, spoke out to Entertainment Weekly about her character's son, Mark, saying, he's a little boy, he's based on a few kids in my life that are boys who dress in more traditionally feminine clothing. He's too young to be gay and he doesn't identify as transgender. Here's the thing, you are weird. <laughs> I'm weird, this whole family is really weird, right? <laughs> so you just gotta hang in there until people figure out that weird is cool. How does this look? Oh, you look great, buddy. These young people who don't know how they identify or are figuring it out or discovering it, this probably opened a lot of hearts and minds and eyes. A family can be made up in many different ways. It's called Soji for sexual orientation and gender identification, a curriculum that teaches public school students across Canada to celebrate the homosexual lifestyle and that gender is fluid. In other words, your gender is not dependent on what parts you were born with, but rather what you feel like in the moment. There's people that are boys, there's people that are girls, there are, there are people whose gender might be a little bit of both or might even be neither. Lessons include books about transgender children, such as 10,000 Dresses and songs like The Rainbow Song. Gender won't decide the choices we make. Some boys like dressing up, some girls like catching snakes. The Soji curriculum started in British Columbia in 2016 and is quickly spreading throughout Canada. I just thought, who decided that this was okay to teach our children? Author and inspirational speaker, Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson, is a leading voice against the SOGI curriculum. And we are seeing the results of that now because some kids are reacting very emotionally and saying, you know, and they're in fear. Will I be, you know, will I suddenly struggle with feeling like a different gender inside of my body? Carrie Simpson of Culture Guard, another leading opponent, calls the curriculum nothing short of child abuse. All those beautiful qualities that make young girls beautiful girls and women are being basically vilified. The things that make our boys boys are being, you know, taken from them. Um, so things of equating young men to being strong protectors is something that's now evil. But Morgan Auger, a transsexual and supporter, claims it's about acceptance, not indoctrination. The idea is to teach kids that there are gay kids and there are trans kids and there are trans parents and gay parents in our society and, the, and everybody's wanted and desired. After all, that's what our human rights code says and it's the role of schools to teach the, to teach the following of our laws, right? Simpson disagrees, saying she sees Soji's real goal as... Altering our culture from a heteronormative society into one where anything goes, no boundaries, no values, no morals. Um, it's a hedonistic uh, cult, basically what they're Im implying. Another blaring example, drag queen story time. It's happening in Canada and America, where some public schools and libraries invite drag queens some dress like horn demons to read to young children. The Heights Public Library today debuting a new children's story hour called Drag Queen Storytime. Good morning, everybody. The Heights Library 
had a special guest for story time. Oh my goodness, everyone is dressed so nice. I wish I would have worn a nice costume for y'all. A visitor who usually performs for an older audience. My name is Blackberry. I'm a bearded drag queen. That means I'm a lady with lots of facial hair. Do you want to touch my hair? No. This program is geared towards kids 10 years old and younger. I just want to expose them to things I don't get to see every day and want it to become the more normal and more accepted. They've never seen a drag queen before, so I thought it was a good chance to see one. Well, let's turn around and shake your butt. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. It was a first for this branch of the public library, too. And it's a social deconstructionist agenda. They're using children, little five-year-olds, to accomplish this. And parents are waking up and saying no. When asked about parents' rights, OJ says... Well, actually, in Canada, parents' rights are limited and children's rights are put ahead. So the child has the right to be protected from the parents when the parents behave badly. A California kindergarten teacher is facing outrage after discussing gender identity with her students. An emotional Rockland Academy teacher addressing a packed house of parents, many furious about her decision to discuss the topic of gender identity inside her kindergarten class. It was never my intent to harm any students, only to support them through a difficult situation. The teacher defended her actions to read two books she says were given to her by a transgender child going through a transition. The kindergartners came home very confused about whether or not you can pick your gender, whether or not they really were a boy or a girl. Parents say besides the books, the transgender student at some point during class also changed clothes and was revealed as her true gender. And many parents say they feel betrayed and blindsided. A new regulation proposed by the Delaware Department of Education would allow students of any age to use bathrooms, locker rooms, and play on team sports based on their express gender identity regardless of sex at birth. Kaylin Jeffers is an English major at Northern Arizona University. On a recent paper, she had a point deducted from her score because she used the word, brace yourselves now, mankind to describe humanity. Her professor, Ann Scott, warned her that this was inappropriate gendered language. Contrary to how the word has been used by almost everybody for centuries, Scott said mankind referred only to men and was therefore sexist. Yes, she told me that um, the word mankind only refers to men. Um, it doesn't actually include all of humanity. Um, huh. Does the dictionary say yeah. that or is there some authority that she pointed to to confirm that position? Well, she referred to uh, the Modern Language Association, um, or MLA, and mm -hmm. apparently they're enforcing this kind of gender-neutral language. This is very scary stuff. Longtime Vancouver area pastor Kevin Cavanaugh says this is far more serious than most Canadian Christians realize. Our problem is not the teachers, the educators, the administrators. This is a battle in the heavenlies. He says Satan is going after their most vulnerable, the children. And the little, little girl came home in tears because the teacher had told her since she was playing with some toys in the class that were deemed to be masculine in nature that she was likely a boy in a girl's body. The mother went to the school the very next day, and instead of having any sort of tolerance or support or understanding, she was actually called names. She was told that she was a homophobe, that she was a bigot. With that in mind, Tyler Thompson, Simpson, and Pastor Kevin are spreading their message across social media and in town hall meetings. The pro-gay backlash has been fierce. And the hatred and the anger and the bullying that came against us, even though we said, we love you, we don't, uh, we don't take from you the opportunity and the freedom to live as you choose. We love you, but we do not agree with you. Pastor Kevin believes Canadian Christians are in a Second Chronicles 20 moment. The word was this, this battle is not yours, Jehoshaphat. This battle is the Lord's and the church is beginning to prepare for what it takes to fight for our kids.